Yo, what's up? I'm Dulex. I'm gonna show you this truck real quick. The truck itself is a 2016 F-150 XLT that I built out to be able to use it as a stealth camper or a full-time living situation if you really want to do so. In the back, if you open up the tailgate, first things first, the bottom is an entirely functional stealth camper or just regular camper without even opening up the top and getting access to the second floor. Right now I've got it in chill mode. So if I get up on the tailgate, this is a perfect spot for me to take my shoes off and I can put my shoes inside of these side cubbies over here. But when I'm chilling in here, we've got this couch. It's a floor couch that's adjustable. So you can have it at different um, angles so that you can sit at whatever angle you want. And it also folds all the way down so that it's taking up less space. And this bottom area also converts into a bed because back here there's a Japanese futon. So if I come out of here, I can pull the floor couch out and then I can just throw this in my back seat of the truck. And with that out of the way, I can open up my side doors and they open up automatically because I put struts on all three of these doors. And then I can just roll out this futon so that it's covering the bottom. And then this is your camping platform right here. And then once the bed is rolled out down here, you can just lay in it. And it's pretty comfortable, man. This um, truck bed is only five and a half feet long and I'm obviously taller than five and a half feet. So for me to sleep down here, I have to curl up a little bit but that's why we have the second floor. And just for stealth camping, this is actually not bad down here. And then when you're not needing to be stealthy or you don't wanna just sleep down here, we can pop the top so we can get access to the second floor and you'll have a lot more of a comfortable setup up there. In order to open up the top, you gotta to undo these four latches. There's one on this side, one on that side, and then two right here in the middle. And I have a step on my tailgate. It makes it a little bit easier to get up here. But once you open up all four of these, all you have to do is push up on this. And then there's struts on this tent. So the whole thing lifts up on its own. And then we've got some zippers right here. These are actually waterproofed with a spray, like a fabric waterproofing spray. And then this is waterproof vinyl fabric. So if it's raining, you don't have to worry about your fabric getting messed up. And then if you unzip this, I can roll this up so that it's out of the way. And that reveals the screen that I've sewn in underneath it. And I have a Velcro strap that I can use or just clamps or whatever to hold this in place so that you can sit in the bed in there and then see from the outside. Once the tent is up there, you can climb on inside of here and then from in here, you can move on up to the second floor and climb up. And then this is the main bed where the guest bed is downstairs. So you can see that you can sleep two people up here and then two people down there pretty comfortably. This mattress is 55 inches wide by 75 inches long. So me being at uh, the height that I am, this is a decent size for me. 
and I usually put my feet down on that side and my head on this side and you have enough room to fully sit up and you're not going to hit your head or anything. And it's a good view of the skylight over here. There's also some plugs down here on this side that have a USB plug-in and a cigarette lighter plug-in as well. There's also a fuse box up here for all of the appliances, including the fan and the solar panel and the fridge down below. I have a little mini projector and project it on any of these um, walls here and you can just like lay down in bed, watch stuff, play games or do whatever you wanna do. But this entire bed here actually folds up and gets out of the way so that you can use this entire space as walk around space if you need to. I can fold it up like this and then that reveals the wood platform underneath. Pull it forward, fold that over and then you can take this whole mattress out of here and as you can see it fits perfectly in there. I made it the exact size. Ah, oh, man. I used to have a big back seat, man. I mean, you need to throw everything down there. Once the mattress is out of the way, we can just roll this out of the way and then that reveals the aluminum supports underneath. And I can just pull that off, get that out of the way, fold that over. And then there's another one right here. Pull that out as well. Get that out of the way. And then this piece lifts up on top of the front shelf and slides out of the way. And then this Japanese mattress right here can go off on top. And then when this is up here, now you have all of this room to move around and do whatever you want to do with it. So I wanted to utilize these truck drawers so that I could cook outside and have a bunch of storage. So if you pull this out, this is actually a double slide out kitchen. And then I have my butane or propane stove right here. I drilled out holes right here so that I can have my spices sitting in there. And then I have utensil storage on that side. And this is my countertop right here. I actually rebuilt this drawer twice. This is the second time. This is a lot more simple this time. The first time I had a lot more intricate parts and stuff in it, but it was way too heavy and I wanted more storage space. So what I'm using right now for the sink is just a jug like this. And then I have a collapsible sink that sits underneath here so that I can use that. Cause I realized I didn't need the sink that much cause I built in an actual like 12 volt powered um, sink with a pump and everything. And it was just way too much uh, space and I wanted more storage space. Cause this kitchen, when it folds up, it only takes up 24 inches of space. And I have all that space behind there as storage. So if I move this jug out of the way, you can see that on this side, I have these removable pieces um, that are part of the floor, but there's storage under there. Like I said, I put my shoes in on this side. And then on the other side, I keep extra propane or butane or whatever I need for the cooktop, whatever I can find. It's really useful having that cooker be propane or butane because then you can pretty much cook with whatever you find. This is my storage drawer that I have empty right now, but this only pulls out 24 inches as well. Both of these only pull out 24 inches because I can actually lift up this middle piece and the whole thing comes up. That's also on struts as well. And then I have storage back there on both sides that I can access from these side windows. I can just reach down in there, grab stuff. This entire thing slides forward, but on that side, that's just stationary storage for stuff that I don't need all the time, but stuff that I still wanna have out with me. This is a Inca 4x4 tailgate bag. I'm gonna have the link to these guys in the description. Every time they sell these, uh, they donate to a veteran fund. So. It helps veterans in need. I'm a veteran myself, so I jumped on the opportunity to grab this, throw it on my truck, and I have the logo back here, so when people see it, they might go check it out and um, get themselves a bag and help out some veterans. Not everybody's as fortunate as me to have a big YouTube channel and run businesses and stuff like that. So if it's a rainy day or something like that and you wanna cook on the inside, you can do that, but of course, ventilation would be an issue, so I have actually put in here a vent fan 
puff at the top. The cool thing about this vent is that I have a remote that can power it on and off so that you don't even need to be in the truck to turn it on. And then also this is accessible while the tent is open or closed and while this bed platform is out or closed. So you could have the bed platform out and the truck cap down and this fan is still out here. So if you needed to like stealth cook or something like that right here, you still have the ventilation right here and the fan is super quiet so nobody can actually hear it from the outside. So no one would actually know what was going on. And not only is it good for ventilation, but it's also really good for uh, climate control in here and just keeping it really cool. Since it's such a small space, it's really easy to suck the air out or pull cool air in here and make it nice and cool in here if you need to. Up on the roof, there's a 100 watt solar panel that runs down to my fuse box and then around down to my anchor powerhouse. It's a pretty cloudy day and on cloudy days when I need to charge this up without the sun or if it's snowing or something like that, I can plug this into the cigarette lighter in my truck while the truck's running and it can charge it up that way as well. And you can also, of course, hook it up to the alternator pretty much any way you would charge up a battery. This is my first time doing a build with something like this and it's a lot more convenient and easy to use. I have all of the appliances in this truck running off of this plug right here. Anything that's 12 volt, I can plug in to here and this also runs the plugs that are up there in the bedroom area and if I need to leave and take my electricity with me all I do is just unplug this I just have one plug for the solar power and then one plug for everything else all of the appliances that I want to run in here can all be ran as if I have like a battery system but I can also walk away with this this has um, two regular house outlets here and then one carport outlet. You can see exactly how much power you're using, how much power is coming in from the solar panel or whatever you have it plugged into. And it'll also tell you exactly how long that the battery will last before it gets to 0% if it's running exactly at the same workload that it's running at right now. So for example, if I plug my refrigerator in and I have it on the highest setting and I'm wondering how long that's gonna last for, this will actually tell me in this corner how long the battery will be able to run before it's gonna be completely at zero. And oftentimes you're also plugged into a power source like the solar panel. So it's not going to actually drain that fast anyway. So it's a nice little calculation that this has on here because when you have your own like DIY setup, it's a lot more difficult to tell what's going on. So if you're a newbie, I think this is definitely a really easy way to do it. But you can make a way bigger system the DIY way. But for this setup, it works out for me. All of the wood on the inside of the truck is coated with at least three coats of oil-based polyurethane. So that's why it has that shine to it. And it's really durable and pretty much waterproof at this point. The wood on the outside is all coated in marine grade epoxy and it's all cedar that's been burned Shao Sugiban style. And I figured since we used marine grade epoxy, that's the same stuff that they use to like make boats float and not rot. So if it works good for boats that are completely submerged in water, it's totally fine for a little bit of rain that it's gonna be taking here in the truck. And we've had lots of rain so far and those doors are holding up perfectly. The entire frame of the truck is made out of aluminum square tubing. I did this because it's much more lightweight. It also doesn't require welding to connect. So I actually did all of these connections with brazing rods because I don't even know how to weld and I also don't have access to a welder in my workshop because I don't have electricity in my workshop. So I just brazed all of these joints together and then I used a combination of rivets and brazing to connect the aluminum uh, diamond plate to the square tubing. And I just did it in ways that the seams are out of the way so that you won't have to um, have any water seeping in. And so far there's been no leaks at all. It's been super strong and super light. This entire camper is less than 300 pounds. I mean, it's probably closer to 250 pounds and you can add an extra 80 pounds or so for the wood because the wood is actually a little bit heavier than the aluminum, but it's been holding up super solid. The part that hangs over the cab Actually, um, a lot of people were asking me about flex and if it was going to flex down and 
damage the top of the truck or if I need to put a rack under there or something to hold it up. And it's been super rigid so far. I've actually been driving this on road, off road, on the highway. I don't do anything too crazy with it, but nothing has moved at all. I can literally hang on the side of the truck and it's not drooping, it's not flexing whatsoever. So far so good, but it's only been a couple of months, so we'll see how well it does in the future. Then the coolest thing about this camper is the fact that I can set it up and put it on my truck and take it completely off myself and go back to being a regular truck bed in like less than 30 minutes. I actually built this in three separate pieces just so that it would be easy enough for me to move it myself. So this top piece from here to here is the rooftop tent that goes all the way out eight feet. And this is just bolted down to this piece, which is actually the like the regular camper shell. So I could take this off and then keep this piece on. And then this is just a regular camper shell without the rooftop tent on it, without the cab over piece. And then I can take this off as well and then go back to being a regular truck bed with a cover and keep my drawers in there for storage. Or I can also take the drawers out as well. So it's like stage one, stage two, stage three. And you can go from being a complete empty truck bed to a full on camper or anything in between. So the entire build cost me a little bit less than $4,000. It's actually right around 3,500. I would say the most expensive thing that you need for this build, if you're gonna do it yourself, is the diamond plate aluminum. I was able to get that in bulk from a metal working shop, but I know if you get that type of stuff at like Lowe's or Home Depot, it's gonna be really expensive. And then also, I'm a veteran, so I get discounts on pretty much everything. Like. 10 to 20 percent off most of the time and then on top of that i am a youtuber so like brands send me stuff from time to time so if you're going to do this yourself i would probably budget like five thousand dollars that's still extremely cheap compared to if you were going to buy something like this and then on top of that you can make it exactly how you want to make it and i mean there's nothing else out there that looks like this all the little parts and pieces in this truck i've most likely got from amazon i have a link in my description that has all of the items that I used in this truck and in my previous van builds and RV builds and stuff like that. So if you've ever been wondering what I use or where I get it, you can check that out besides the wood and the metal, of course, regular building materials. My next build, I'm gonna be building that tiny travel trailer. It's only 16 feet that I bought a couple months back. I'm finally getting ready to do that because I just finished this. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you haven't already so you can check that out. And if you wanna see what I do with this truck in the future, then subscribe to my new YouTube channel. It's called Dulex Adventure, and I'm just gonna be going on adventures with the rigs that I build. So that'll be in the description as well. There's a bunch of great stuff in the description. Just check it out if you're interested in any of that stuff. But for now, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for checking out the tour, and I'll be seeing you in that RV build. And maybe you'll be seeing me camping in this truck if you check out my other channel. So catch you in the next one later. Never at ease, I don't know a limit Chasing a dream, I don't know what sleep is I got a queen, she lit me the evening She ripe like a peach and she snapped me the snippet You well overdue for that link up in person Text me to fall through a murder, she wrote it Still up with courage, you're doing a service Pull up to the crib, I'm equipped with the brush strokes Cut throat from the low low, where no love goes Women buddy buddy like a spin